Can we talk a bit, a bit about Jeff Mace and the decision to bring him in and just like the way you guys are so sort of skillfully mine the, the, the history of the comics but reinterpret them as well? Well, I, look, this is something that we've been doing from the very beginning. Uh, and, you know, one of the real challenges of, of doing 22 hours of broadcast television is that, you know, it's, it's not like what the movie studios do. They, they have the extraordinary ability to be able to tell these incredible adventures, but they only have to do that twice a year. And so coming up with four hours of material as opposed to 22 hours of material, um, you know, we're right now, I think, on our 70th episode, and by the time we get to the end of the season, there'll have been 88 episodes of S.H.I.E.L.D., which means that we've made sort of the equivalent of 44 movies. Um, and, and that would be more movies than anybody's ever made. So uh, the, what it speaks to, however, is, is the depth and the richness of the Marvel catalog and the fact that all of those characters, no matter how big or how small, uh, can somehow turn into something that's surprising and new and, and in a way that if you're a fan, great. Um, but for most people, when they're watching our shows, what they're doing is is they're getting involved with the people in the show. And uh, Jason O'Mara has just done an extraordinary job in, in, in one episode uh, of getting people to go, oh, I like him. Uh, I'd like to know more about him. And so that's very rewarding for us because as I think people do understand, we're not making a show like this week for next week. So we're, we're further down the line. And so if, if it doesn't work, there's not a lot we can do about it. It's in the can. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's the same thing. You look, we took a big risk by, by taking Ghost Rider and putting him on the show. Uh, and, uh, you know, a combination between an extraordinary performance by Gabriel Luna uh, and terrific writing by our incredible writing staff. and. Uh, and to give credit where credit's due, uh, you know, Mark Kolpak, who's our visual effects supervisor, uh, it, at least in my humble opinion, is doing movie quality effects on a television budget and a television schedule on top of that. Uh, and so people seem to be connecting and, and are willing to uh, come with us up to our, our 10 o'clock time slot. I mean, I, you know, this is a show that, that had to work at 8 o'clock, it had to work at 9 o'clock, and now it's got to work at 10 o'clock. And I think that speaks to both our audience and to the quality of the storytelling, that, sure. that people want to see these characters. And, and again, it's one of the things that I've always said about Jeff Bell and Marissa Tancheron and, and Jed Whedon, who are our showrunners and co-creators, um, that they don't get enough credit for the fact that when this show started, uh, we had this tremendous gift of having Clark Gregg come on the show from the movies. And, and there would be no shield without Agent Coulson and without that character, but everybody else that came in, Fitzsimmons and, and uh, Sky, who's now Daisy, who's now Quake, uh, and uh, Henry uh, Simmons, uh, who plays uh, Mac, you know, and, and the list goes on and on. Um, you know, these were all original. And I'm, of course, and Agent May, <laughs> Migna, uh, you know, they all, at, at some point, uh, we have to realize that these are brand new characters. And, and the fact that those characters have now moved on and exist in the comics and now are really part of the lexicon, I think, really speaks to the quality of the writing. Sure.